see. I won't go through the list of people that are attending, but it's, it's really great to see the number of people that have signed into the session. Um, this is the fourth of, of a series of sessions that we've done over the last month. It's really been a good way of trying to get information across to schools and short, sharp um, spurts. Um, before Shane disappears and, and does some other work in the background, thank you very much, Shane. Just be warned, the session might be a bit shorter than the others. There's really two main subjects here that we're going to look at. But yeah, thanks very much, Shane, for your involvement. Um, it's really great that you've come on board and, and acted as the technical support. I was told, and I know one person's going to laugh when I mention this, I won't go into details, but I was, told, I was told I must call it technical support. So I'll call that technical support. Thank you very much for, for, for your um, involvement, Shane. Really appreciate it from there. Um, so to kick off straight away, um, there you've got Shane's details. Should you need to get hold of him, um, he's involved in this sort of stuff, and it really is a good communication process. Today, we're basically going to look at SA Sam's administration, if we want to call it that, um, a brief overview of what's, what we do in FedSAS and who we are, just so you know who we are, and we'll give you some contact details. Looking at learner requirements by the departments, what exactly is SA SAMS? I've heard various ways of it being pronounced and various spellings. The best one I heard the other day was SAMS. So SAMS is another way of saying it, but we're talking SA SAMS. Also, I've taken the opportunity to just recap and look again at financial data. It's a big concern in Natal as to what data has to be supplied and, and who's responsible for it. So I've used the opportunity just to add a little bit of information in with regards to that. Um, also, just look at allocation, and then we'll obviously deal with those unfortunate things that do happen, threats, and how to handle them. I think we, we need to understand that SSMs will continue to be a point of discussion for a long time. We're going to have to be going through the details. Um, in the tell, we are fairly fortunate that we're um, uh, maybe a year or two behind Gauteng. So we've gone through, when I say we, FedSAS has gone through the experience of the imposition of SSMs. Um, but data collection is a critical function in the education department, and we've got to acknowledge it. Um, we, we have to acknowledge that there's a relationship between the school and the department, um, but we have to, have to understand where our various roles are. Um, and really, we're going to look at, at how we're going to handle this, this quite prickly matter or quite difficult matter um, when, you, when, when demands are made of certain information. A little bit of background, what FedSAS are about. Um, for those of you that aren't aware of who we are and how we operate, we've been around for since 1994. Um, we've got 110 volunteers throughout the country. Some of them are on this session. Thank you very much for your involvement. Um, in Natal, uh, we have Marius Cronier and myself. I sit in Howick and Marius Cronier is up in Newcastle. And then we also have an administrative officer, Joy, who uh, works mornings does a bit of our admin side and, and that, that side of stuff. So Maurice and myself are the two provincial managers. If you have any queries, please, you're welcome to get hold of us. Purposely left the slide up there for a while so you can get those details if you don't have those details yet. We are very fortunate that we've got a, a very efficient legal department or support group that backs us um, with our queries. We're dealing with them on the specific matter quite a bit at the moment. Um, they're really, really responsive. They've also got contact through to the national department, which is great. So if we need to take the queries that are, we, we've got a link that does get through to it. I'm not going to say that I can solve all your frustrations today about SA SAM. So those of you that came on board hoping that you're going to go away and not have to use SA SAMs, sorry for you. We have to find a way around it. It's fairly reasonable to expect data to be managed in a certain way. But we need to know where our rights and, and, and responsibilities stand with regards to that. And that's really what this is about. Um, the, the three handouts that I've included in the pack, one is our document on SA SAMS is the only option. Please don't read it now, rather listen to the information. Most of it comes from there. The other two documents are the most recent, and I say the most recent circulars with direct regard to SA SAMS that have come through. When I'm talking about circulars, I'm talking about implementing legislative a direction. That's what circulars should be. They should be implementing documents. They shouldn't be recreating the law. Subsequent to that, there are probably a whole lot of other circulars, and I can mention a few of them that have been generated, um, that create the impression indirectly or directly that certain things have to take place. But those are the two defining documents that that's, um, started the whole process in Natal with SA SANS. So essentially what we're looking at, we're looking at learner data, the requirements by the department and what's required by the department. Um, we're looking at um, the 10 day counts, the information that's required um, in the process, looking at your termly marks that need to go through, 
Um, these are all the requirements that the DBE require into the system so that, that we can comply and provide them information. Okay. The LURIT submission obviously is your national submission. For those of you that don't know, we'll have a brief look at LURIT and what that's about now. Um, please forgive me. I'm going to try to do something fancy just now, and it may or may not work. We'll see if it does work, and you'll see if it if the fanciness has helped. Okay, what is LURITS? LURITS is the learner unit. Um, LURITS is learner unit record information tracking system. Um, this is where I'm going to try to get fancy and go directly into their website. Um, and from, you'll see the date there, uh, 29th of September 2008, the Minister um, of Education, Lady Pandor, launched the LURIT system in Pretoria. That's when it started taking place. You're welcome to go to that website detail and go through the information. But basically, it was to track learners, to track the information of them on a national basis so they can be seen. It is a quite, compli quite a complicated system. The very important thing that I want to take out of this in the very beginning of this discussion, and I will read it out, I'll highlight it just now when I go back to the slides, is that it has to allow, um, let me just see if I can get a point on that, it has to allow for schools with computerized school administration systems to use the system directly. That was one of the requirements when they set it up. It had to cater for that scenario, cater for the following scenarios. So it's very important that we then look at it and we say, what, what is it? It's a national system and it has to cater for schools with connectivity using computerized schools administration packages that will use, use directly, uh, LURITS directly. That, that is a very important um, statement that we need to understand. Um, it allows space for what we call third party um, uh, software suppliers, and then it gives us a better understanding of where we're going. So folks in the admin side will know what the department's requirements are with regards to your LURIS submission that needs to take place. We then look at SA SAMS. Okay, SA SAMS is now sitting in implementation stage in KZN. Um, Eastern Cape have gone through the process and I do work down and down on the Eastern Cape border, um, Matatiel, that area, they're very happy with SA SAMS. It isn't creating a headache. Uh, across the border and go to Coxstadt and a while ago when I went there and sent, said SA SAMS, they wanted to throw me out or uh, uh, accuse me of swearing because I was using words that they didn't like. So we need to be, need to just be mindful that as more support comes in place, it is going to be a, a more a system that we can utilize a little bit better. Preferred is the word, okay? And I'll leave it up there a while so we can think and see exactly what, what we're saying with it. We're talking about schools, uh, school administration management system. So that's SAMS versus SA SAMS, okay? So the one is school administration management system and the other is South African, um, uh, sorry, let me just move this out the way. South African School Administration and Management System. Now, on the right-hand side is an admin system. That is an admin system that is a name for a generic process, okay? So the generic name for all the administration systems is School Administration Management System. SA SAMS is one of those, okay? It's a product like any of the others. Principal Plus, Front Office, EduPack, EduAdmin, Microscope, uh, Fenestra, there are a number of them that I haven't put the whole list up there, but essentially it's a product, okay, that is used to manage the data in a, a school administration management system. Obviously, the difference between a lot of the, the, the four and others down there is they cost the school money, and the, the one on the right hand side, SA SAMS, is free. It's free to the school. I hate to let you know, I won't let you know how expensive it's costing, how much it's costing the taxpayer at the moment. So that is really what it's about. And what we're saying is SA SAMS is not about a system, it's about the data format. The data format needs to be in a certain way that can get to the department so that they can manage it. It's about choice as well. How are we going to get that information to the department is up to us, okay? We may have a more efficient manner. We may have a more functional, more technology-friendly manner. It might be a more affordable manner, or it might have other functionalities. So your admin systems that you use in a school, if they're not SA SAMs, they may have other functions that SA SAMs do not include. Okay. They might have discipline approaches, they might have calendars, they might have communication modules, they might have finance modules, they might have other modules that are different, 
but we are allowed to use them. Okay, and we'll get down to that as well, because I think that's what often we're told. No, you can't use any other system. You have to use SA SAMS. Um, the next slide will probably explain in more detail what it's about. It's about the delivery of the information. The department are required or require certain information. Legally, they require certain information. They require it in a specific format and they require it at a specific time. I think that's a reasonable thought process that we, we all understand. There's a huge amount of data, the whole Lurits and um, Sam's system drive to get information in the right place so we can track our learners in the system. Okay. But it's about how we're delivering that information that, that we're really on, on about when we talk about it. So you've got to deliver information to the post box, if we can call it that, of the department. Okay, It has to be in a specific format, in a specific type. Whether you use a motorbike, or whether you use a bicycle, or whether you use a bicycle with someone sitting on top so you can deliver more at one go, or whether you get fancy and use a drone, okay, you need to deliver the newspaper to the department. They, they are allowed to, entitled to that information, okay? I'm not just talking pri uh, public schools, I'm talking all schools. I was very surprised to find the stress that some independent private schools go through to deliver information to the department. They need it in a certain format. And we have to supply it in a certain format so that we can conform. When we talk about data, we ask what data are we talking about? Okay, so what data needs to be delivered in that specific format? Um, if I go back a step, I hope we all understand that analogy of we need to get the information into the post box in a certain format. What we use to get it there is up to us. Bicycle, motorbike, Jag, BMW, drone, whatever we want to use is really up to us. But we need to get that information in a certain format to there. If the device that we use, if I can call it that, or the transport that we use is can make coffee on the way, let's use an exa a ridiculous example, then we're allowed to use it. It's a freedom of choice. We're allowed to use it provided we can get that information to the department in the format that it needs to be delivered to. So that's really important. Now we talk about what data is required. Okay, your 10th ten, day SNAP is required. It's called a SNAP, your 10th day count. You need weekly information every Monday, Friday at 12 o'clock. If you're panicking about these, this is specifically what happens in Gauteng at the moment. Mattel might still run their own rules. We've got 12 districts and as a result, we still have 12 rules. Um, but one of the advantages about going to SOSM's compliance is that we are going to get a limitation on the rules and we're going to get a more uniform approach. Monthly needs to be in every third week, and then you also need to um, termly submit information. Okay, so that's the, the time frames and the data that needs to go through to the departments in the various format. We need to get it lined up that it can go through that. I'm not going to go into all the details with regards to the, the technical side. I specifically spoke about um, in the beginning, I said it's not a technical presentation. There are a number of organizations, and we'll speak about them, that can handle that transfer. So any, any reasonable third-party system should be able to supply the information in the format that the department wants. But they cannot stop or force the, the schools to use any other products. No matter what they do, they will come and try and threaten things to you. You, you have got the legal stand to say, hang on a sec, we're not going to use it. To give you a very clear example of what has been happening, okay? And you can see that it's Ugu District, Ugu District. I did cross out the school's name for their sake, but this is a communication that came to a school and they simply wanted the principal to sign it and send it back. Okay, I'll let you take in all that information so you can see exactly what we're talking about. Um, they're basically saying that your old package is front office and you now have to move to South African school, South African school administration and management system, okay? Kindly make the changes into the system, sign and say you're going to do it, okay? I don't want to show you what the principal sent back to the department because it would be very impolite, okay? On our guidance, we didn't tell him to be impolite, but on our guidance, he rejected this request and he said, sorry, we are going to continue to use front office. I engaged with the district in the area and I said to them, we need to understand um, who is, um, who else is, um, or the information that's going through, we need to understand the process that's, uh, that's happening here. Um, so, so that's really the sort of communication that's going through. Sometimes it's a bit less subtle, okay? Sometimes you are told by the department you will use SA SAMS. Um, I think we need to understand it once again in the context of KZN, where we have 6,200 odd schools, and probably if we're lucky, about 
thousand, I'm being generous, maybe 500 have got computerized systems. Um, a lot don't have computerized systems. They don't have anything in place. So for them, SASAMS is the best thing, best thing since sliced cheese. It really works well. It operates well for them. I'm not saying it's a bad system. It has its limitations, but they're quite happy to use it. And it's an upgrade from where they are. The department are trying to get everybody to use SASAMS compatible information. The wording is sometimes lost by the district chats. And I'll go through the exact details just now. Okay, the threats from officials and how to handle them. Um, just up front, we need to just be aware of how we're going to look at those things. Ask for the request to be put in writing. Okay, so when the department official sends you a letter and says, I need this in this because you, the principal of the school, and you need to send it through, or you, the administrator, or you employed by the department, you have to do it. Ask them for the request in writing so that your governing body can consider it. Okay. Ask them for the supporting prescripts, i.e. the law that entitles them to request this. Okay, so ask them where the law comes from. They should quote these two documents that we've got, KZN45 and Circular 146, or higher up documents. Once again, for those of you that aren't aware, the South African Schools Act oversees all the other communication that comes through. The Constitution sits at the highest level, then the South African Schools Act, all the other acts that are passed with regards to education then sit then and then it goes down to your provin provincial guidelines and your provincial circulars once again circulars are enabling documents and they need to be handled from there this gentleman is the one that you need to get hold of and please don't panic and run for the wall just now i'm going to put a screen up just now that you can take the information i have a direct conversation i've had a direct conversation with this gentleman he has given me the understanding that yes at the senior level of the department they understand and they are well aware that schools can use other admin systems. Okay. If you've got a problem, send him an email. Okay. Lower down in the departments, unfortunately, they don't understand the difference between SA SAMs and SA SAMs compatible. And as a result, we end up with a problem. Okay. Um, just seeing a attendee on board, we have Rian Fonenberg, who is our FEDSAS IT manager. He handles a lot of these inquiries and queries. So I'm sure if I'm off track or if he wants to add anything, we'll give him an opportunity to add something down the road. So in the tell, this is a gentleman to get hold of. I invited him to a PCF meeting or asked him to be at a PCF meeting rather, which he attended. We had a lengthy discussion after the meeting about SASAMs um, and about the compatibility drive and the third party usage. He's quite aware that it works well. For him, it's another 500 schools that he doesn't have to worry about because they're getting the information in the right process. Once again, it does require the third party suppliers to be able to convert the information into SASAMS compatible format. So it can go into that SASAMS post box. That's really what we're looking to do in the process from there. On the next page, I'll give you some more contact details. And these are the ones that you may want to take down. Uh, sorry, let's just go back here a bit. Okay, you've got Mr. Kanye's um, EMIS departmental details up top there, and then the national EMIS director details are there, okay, to get hold of those folks. They are fairly current, okay, the numbers are answered, there are people, these folks are trying to make a difference there. So get hold of these folks, and they would be able to help you with the, with the details with regards to your queries. We recently had a query in one of the schools this year today with regards to um, toggle changes and allocation changes that happen makes me furious to see that the department think they can change these details. We need to try and get hold of these people and try and get it sorted out so that you can submit on all platforms as you are required to from that side. So that's that's really what we, we're talking about. If you need to get hold of people, obviously get hold of us as well. Okay. And we've taken steps to engage with the department. So they're well aware that schools are going to, in their eyes, maybe resist it. But it's not resisting. It's just saying, hang on a sec, we want to use something else to do the delivery. If we can afford to, and it's a more efficient tool, we're entitled to use it. So that's really what, what it's about as far as that, that process goes. Um, this is quite a detailed slide and basically gives you some scenarios of what you need to consider when, when you're looking at the, at the process. Um, how you need to handle it, which is the necessary legal framework that handles the process, and how you go and, and work about sorting out this, at times, difficult situation. Okay. The school and the provincial department on number one, that's where the relationship is. The school is pressurized to use specific um, systems, whilst the department might only prescribe the content and the format of the data. Okay. And then there's the legal frameworks as to where it goes through. 
Number two is quite important, the relationship between the SGB and the service provider. The third party did not comply with departments as required. Most systems have an export functions, okay? To SA SAMs, the DDD dashboard and the value structure are processes that work through from that side. The third party suppliers should be able to give you advice. And obviously there was a bit of a scramble at the beginning of the year um, that we're trying to work it all out because there was more insistence from the department for the submission. But most of the third party suppliers and Natal that I come across are getting it right. Um, the school that I'm directly involved in, we've got it right, our third party supplier has come through. Um, so most of them are getting it sorted out and running it through. Um, it's very important to understand that the department may prescribe the content and the format of the data that is required, okay? Not the vehicle that's used, okay? Most importantly, the principal and the department, that's an employer-employee relationship. The principal and other officials are often threatened. They need to understand that this is the legal framework that they operate into. Your, your support for that is through at your unions, okay? So where the principals are threatened, they need to get the unions to support them to get them to understand. On the far right-hand side, obviously are the contacts and how they're gonna handle it. So please feel free to use those so that we can actually sort out this problem before it becomes a major, major bun fight in the school environment. Okay, the second part what I'm talking about today is the financial responsibility with regard, the management responsibility with regards to financial data. Okay, um, the legal prescripts. Um, for those of you that are aware, uh, Circular 57 and Circular 70 of 2017 have come out that have created all sorts of concerns amongst us with regards to what information has got to be handled. Um, she, the basic details are that you need to understand the information that goes through. Sorry, I'm just going to take a pause because I've got a message coming through. Um, the, it's just, as, as it says there, the governing body of a public school keeps records of funds received and spent by the public, and it's uh, records of liabilities and financial transactions, okay? As soon as practically possible, but not three months, financial statement needs to be drawn. Within six months after the end of the year, they need to be submitted to the education department. Now, what we're having in Natal at the moment is we're getting all sorts of pressure with regards to the fact that the department is issuing circulars that are contrary to what this process is, okay? The, the, one of the recent uh, circular 70, I will get to 57 just now, but circular 70 um, started stipulating to the auditors how they should be auditing the process. Um, and the uh, and psycho are taking it up and having having an assessment of the whole process we have escalated it to national because i haven't had a response from um dr zama and hod the hod of kzn i haven't had a response at all from him so we are taking it on to a national level to say we haven't got a response and we need to get a clearance on where we're going with it the two aspects that we're looking at is um circular 57 requests quarterly reporting of income and um, expenditure um, statements on a monthly basis. So it has to be reported quarterly, but monthly records. Um, and HRM 70 is looking at your auditing processes. Um, both of those cases, we feel we've already communicated amply to the department. There is legal uh, prescripts in place as to what we've done. And we've taken to that process. When I say we as a school, we take that process. Um, I have got a copy, it haven't been loaded on the handout, but I've got a copy available of the letter that we've sent to the department, which I'm quite happy to send to anybody who asked for it so you can understand what our communication is. We have also placed it on our D6KZN D6 communicator, so you can actually pick that up from there. But essentially the department have, have got rights to certain information and they've got processes that they can actually handle, okay? They've got the right to inspect information, the right to certain information, the right to an audit, transfer of piece, uh, transfer of norms and standards has to be within a certain process. Okay. Very important to understand the role of the Public fin Finance Management Act. There's information on the website, on our FedSAS website with regards to that, to say where we sit with regards to the Public Finance Management Act and how we need to conform to that. So that's very important to actually see those details and understand what's got to be reported to on, on that aspect there. You need to understand as well that there's no prescribed accounting system that a school has to use, okay? The department cannot insist that you fill forms in, in a certain way. 
you might be running your own accounting systems already. You're entitled to as long as they are audited and, and the governing body are happy that they are managing the financial aspect of the school. Okay. There are obviously general accounting packages and there are school specific accounting packages. Okay. Um, your general ones that we're more familiar with, Pastel and QuickBooks, your school administration systems, principal, front office, edu pack, edu admin. Some of those have got admin systems that can be worked quite well. So once again, there's no prescribed system that you have to use in accounting. The law requires you to submit annual financial statements and it requires you to, to submit a plan with regard to your norms and funding. Um, and that's really what we have to look at when we're handling this, this process. So the response to the Department of Education besides the communication um, is, is along the lines of this, and I'm quite happy to share with this. We've sat down and worked out a nice communication that we can send through to your district SEM, because he's the chap who's bringing the message through to the schools, and he's saying you will conform and you will do this and you will do that according to Circular 57 or according to Circular 70. So basically we're saying with due consideration and legal advice from FedSAS, and to this we suggest you attach the letter that we've sent through to the department in which we've asked them to handle the, the, the request to with, withdraw the circular on, on three bases. Firstly, they've already got the information with regards to the financial statements that are submitted every year, provided your schools do submit audited financial statements. Secondly, they have already got planning documents with regards to the spend of the norms and standards. That's already in place. And thirdly, most importantly, that Circular 57 threatens the principles, okay? I don't like threats at all. The, the real thing to then, then look at, and that's what we've pointed out, is that the principal, once again, is not the accounting officer of the school. They need to address that communication to the right person. Okay. So this is the type of letter that we give to the SEM to say, Mr. SEM, we appreciate you trying to do your job. You've got an instruction, but this is where our concern lies, and we will not be complying with this request because we consider it unlawful, and we do recognize your need for information. We do recognize that you can come and inspect the information. Inspect means you can come on site at a time that is considerate to everybody involved, not just when you want to barge in, but when it is convenient for all involved, you can come and look at the information. They can then come through and then at least they've got a letter, the SEM has got this letter to then go back and say, okay, thank you very much. Very important, chairman of the school SGB, not the principal, please folks chairman of the SGB. Let them chase the chairman of the SGB with regards to this matter, not, not, not chase the principal. It's very important that we run through that process along those lines there. So that in a, in a really brief nutshell, and I did warn Shane we were going to be quite, quite quick today, that's kind of what we're talking about when we're talking about SA SAMs and compliance. It is very much an overview. I'm not delving into all the technical details. Um, third party suppliers have got links to the department to help the process and they really they, they're making what they can out of it to try and get it done. I know a lot of the third party suppliers are really struggling to get up to date and keep up to date. The department is supposedly to sit down and discuss it but it doesn't happen. Changes take place, SA SAMS takes changes takes place and then the department scramble. Um, but you need to know where you stand with it. So yes, we still have to use SA SAMS but we don't have to exclusively use SASAMs. And I think that's the very important point that we need to have a look at. At this point, while there may be some questions coming through, I just want to ask Rian if he doesn't want to add anything from the wisdom of Gauteng with regards to the processes. Yeah, Paul, I can maybe make one or two comments, uh, but I haven't prepared uh, in length. Uh, no, your, no. Your, uh, outline, your outline is, is definitely accurate. Um, I see some of the circulars that you're referring to back date from 2012 uh, already. So, so the department is definitely struggling to collect data. And that is, that is the common denominator. We all want to make sure our schools comply with supplying data for the department to make proper decisions as far as resource allocation and that kind of thing. So we are pro quality data. What my discussion is with the department is that we uh, might sit with uh, a school using the correct system, if there is something like that, but there's no um, evaluation of the quality of the data. So they're more interested in you using the right typewriter, but, but not worried about what you put on the page. And, that, and that's where the debate kind of gets stuck. Um, so, so we are constantly trying to, to achieve compliance while making sure that we um, 
have data standards and comply with, with submitting the right data. As far as um, the recent developments, you know, it, it, it seems like a bullying tactic and I will take it up with, with the national department again. To, to not share the, the data structures so that third parties can't achieve it, it implies that a school that wants to comply with the SASAM's data standard needs to end up with doing double work. And that's what we don't want to do. We want to make sure that schools are as efficient as possible, um, you know, so that you can enter data into one system and then export to another system. So, so we are working hard at that uh, and, and trying to get that uh, cooperation going. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a minefield. Um, the big thing is to understand the three relationships slide that you have there because the department will come into the principal's office and try and bully the principal based on an SGB issue. So one's got to determine, is it a, a employer employee relationship issue? You know, um, bullying tactics are never good, uh, especially if they threaten with disciplinary action when there's no direct instruction. So that's the one thing where we probably need to move closer to the union. The unions, uh, if an employer employee relationship is in trouble it's a union um, uh, issue and then the SGB um, and the department that's the relationship that fits us assist in managing and then the department of oh, then the relationship with the third party or, or supplier uh, you know that's where where the supplier needs to step in and achieve compliance with its system so it's always a minefield but yeah I think we're on the right track here by just um, creating a lot of awareness as to what our rights and our responsibilities are in, in that sense. No, that's great. Thanks very much. Um, and I, I would appreciate, Rian, if you wouldn't mind hanging around, I see some of the questions coming through, which I'm sure Shane is going to put up on the screen just now so we can have a look. Might, might require a little bit of your input as well. Um, so we'll, we'll have a look at them. And then if I need you to hop in, I'll say, if, could you want to add to it or where are we going from that side? Um, Easy. Okay, we, we, we spoke about the question from um, Tim earlier with regards to breaking down, and I think you've addressed that, that we, you, you are in one of the places, and I think the third party suppliers are also trying to get some idea from the department as to where they're going so that they can allow that to take place. Um, yeah, Tim, all I can say is that there's lots of plans, and I think we need to be careful that we don't overthink this before things do happen. I'm not saying don't plan for the future, but I think we've got to be aware that some of these things aren't going to happen. They're going to be opposed, but at times we aren't told about them. So we only oppose once they're on the ground from that side. The SA Sam's conflict. Uh, sorry, I'm seeing which one. Oh, you've got it up on the screen there. Okay. So problems arise. You can read the question when they conflict with marking, mark weightings. Um, with regards to CAPS or third party software, um, there, there is a, a dysfunction, Gavin, and I agree with you entirely. There's a dysfunction, if I can call it that, between CAPS and SA SAMS. Um, and it, it is a problem. Hopefully, SA SAMS, and they keep talking about upgrades and things like that, it will become more flexible that they can run it through. I do know that most of the third party suppliers have got a flexibility, but if you're going through SA SAMS as a post box, that's where the problem lies. And it does, it does unfortunately create a lot of problems. So Gavin, I don't have an answer for you other than I'm well aware that this does happen. Um, and it does create frustration to get submissions um, through with the right sort of scoring and the right sort of compliance levels. Um, the the lot more we work on the system, I think the, the better we're going to be in, in the process that we run it through, um, that we can understand. And, and the more support, if I can maybe say that's what we also need to look at, obviously keep pushing it and keep trying to get it in the right space. But as I say, the Eastern Cape, they're quite happy with SO SAMS because they've had it for a while. They've found workarounds. I heard a workaround today that the department don't accept grade RR, so a very clever school decides their grade RR class will be grade RA, and then they'll have grade RB, and that's how they've worked around those sort of things. So there are those ways so that you're still using the whole system in its, in its entirety, but with workarounds. Okay, using our own front office system, we struggle to get the data into SA SAMS. Any suggestions? Dion, I'm presuming that you're talking about an, an administration system called front office, which I'm also aware of and, and, and have, haven't worked on it, but I'm aware of it. I would say that needs to be directed to your front office um, support chaps. They, they, if we're talking about a specific system, 
uh, get hold of the system um, support and, and they can sort it out. I know from personal experience or direct experience that, that there has been a lot of work done in the last year to try and get that in place. So that's, that's the, the way you need to try and solve that is get to the third party suppliers and say that's what we need to get in place from there. Once again, also, and I have to reiterate what I've just said, is SA SAMS is going to become more understandable as we get more expertise on the ground. Um, but the, the first year, first two years are, are a nightmare. Um, once we get more understanding of it, then it, then it does, does make it easier from there. I think also the other thing to bear in mind is that there's, there's places in the province that don't even have electricity um, and, and, and they're trying to get them to comply. So that is quite, quite a thing that we need to consider as well. Okay, logging into SSMs only allows one person at a time to the frustration of the staff. How do we sort this out that all staff can fill in the necessary data? Unfortunately, that is one of the shortcomings. It is, it is a system-based unit. Um, it, it, you have to queue in the system. Some schools have found various ways of doing it, but it's not a, a cloud-based system. So it is a frustration in the system um, that, that, that is in place that, that we have to understand at this stage. Obviously, if you're with any third party suppliers, you would have multiple access points, um, and then you would be able to speed up the work. You wouldn't be queuing in front of that specific computer. Um, if you're working off a cloud-based system, um, you'd be able to operate off some of off, off a, a wider and wider number of people would be able to work through it from there. Um, Gavin, that was exactly the reason for the call to Corinne due to the difference in curriculum, okay, versus what is loaded in SASAMS and cannot be changed. Um, Tim, may I, may I ask if Kareen gave any guidance to the fact that SASAMS and CAPS is not compliant? Um, I'd love to hear if, if that had been put at her, her desk to say, SASAMS and CAPS, there's a dysfunction between the two. Because um, then, we, then we're getting somewhere to actually acknowledge that it is happening. Okay. Yeah, once again, it's a limitation that SASAMS does have. Um, once again, and I sound like a stuck record, I'm not advertising and I'm purposely not mentioning any operating systems, but a lot of the third party systems can do that. And they can handle those sort of processes. So depending on the size of your LSIM classes and how you can handle the information, that's me, maybe what you need to start looking at and say, let's look at third party solutions that can actually help us with the process. Um, so, so that's really where there are limitations with SSM. I mentioned an upgrade. There are rumors in the corridors of upgrades with regards to SASMs. I'm not talking about patches. Patches are different things. <laughs> patches create chaos. There are SA, there, is, there is talk of an upgrade on SASMs, but I, I got no idea when that might be happening from that side. Okay. Shane, I'll let you take any questions that have been thrown at you. Are there any hands up? Um, uh, yeah, let's...